Hey, it's Mazzy here. This is a video about Revolver, the 4LP set, not the CD box set, but this. 4LP's mono stereo remix, 2LP's of outtakes in a beautiful book. Now, if Sgt. Pepper in 1967 was this summer of love, colorful experience of swinging London and Carnaby Street and just the stereo effects going through and the different wonderful LSD trip type albums. I would argue that Revolver in 1966, August of 1966, is more of their black and white record. They get into gritty electronics for the first time, electric guitars, and I would say it's her first electric album. Of course, the Beatles played electric instruments all through you know their career. So that's maybe something that you might not understand, but listen to what I have to say. I'm gonna showcase the record. I'm gonna talk about uh, how I like it, what I like about it, the sound of it. I'm gonna compare it to some other pressings and other copies I have, and there will be an introduction. So there are countless, thousands, literally, of unboxing and showcasing of the Revolver album right now. So if you want something really different, stand by after this. So in 1966, us Americans were deprived of the perfect Beatle album until some years later, or unless we had some connection or knew about buying a UK import of Revolver. Spring of that year, 1966, we get this bastardization record yesterday and today. Now, Capitol, as you know, in America, they put out more records because they included singles, there were comps. They weren't the same configuration up until Sgt. Pepper. So in early 66, Capitol needs more tracks. They put the singles on here yesterday. We can work it out, Day Tripper, a few others, and they want more music to pad it, to pad it to what, 11 songs? 11 songs. And so, they solicit George Martin to send them some new songs that the Beatles are working on. They send them My Only Sleeping, Dr. Robert, and Your Bird Can Sing. Three amazing songs. Different mixes, by the way. They ended up being different mixes. We wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. So, of course, for me, I think it was in 1967, 68, I started getting UK copies. After Sgt. Pepper came out, I really learned, not sure if I knew it at the time, that the records were very, very different. And as imports started coming in, Tower Records opens up in San Francisco in 1968, had import sections, and I started getting all the Beatle records, the UK uh, configured copies. Now, I do wanna show uh, some records here from my collection. Uh, this is an original first press mono. Now, everyone says, including the Beatles, that the mono is the way to go. Mono, mono, mono for this, for Sgt. Pepper. But I am a stereo uh, freak. And to me, this is an electric album that works really wonderfully in uh, stereo. And as I said, I talked about this being an electric album. I thought this was the first Beatles electric album. Because remember, in America, the Rubber Soul we got in end of 1965 was a different version also than the Rubber Soul that you got in the UK. It was more organic, more acoustic. It starts off with, what does it have? I, I'm looking through you. I've just seen a face. And it's just it has that very uh, folky uh, feel to it more so than uh, the uh, original configuration the Beatles intended. So I always see that, see that as an acoustic album, even though it's not an absolutely acoustic album. And same with this, but this is electric. Backwards tape loops, a lot of experimentation on this would obviously lead into the next year with Sgt. Pepper. Early this year, of course, Rain and Paperback Writer come out. Two uh, of their best singles, and that is also in the box, which we'll uh, talk about in a little bit. Also, the sense of this being a black and white album is not only the music, but of course, is obviously is this great cover illustration, photo illustration, combination by Klaus Vormann, uh, their friend from Hamburg, Germany, bass player in his own right, music, musician in his own right. Back cover by the photographer Robert Whitaker again, who took the uh, butcher cover image as well. But what a fantastic uh, album. Uh, this is the original mono version. This is 
the mono version from the 2014 box. Cut very similar, exactly like the original with the flip back cover design with EMI and Parlophone put out in the 1960s. And this is the new mono that comes in the new box, this 4LP box set. Now, this is an all analog cut by Sean McGee. Despite what you hear, despite naysayers, all analog cut. This is also an all analog cut from the 214 edition. Now, I played them both back to back. I didn't hear a huge, huge difference. I'd say if you have the 214 box, you don't need to get this, but you need to get the vinyl with the outtakes and the remix. So you're gonna get this along the way, this along the way, one of these, you're gonna get two revolvers. Both good, both equally as good. Is there a different eight years later? I don't hear a huge difference, if any. Very, very close. All analog, mono. Now I'm gonna get into the remix, a stereo remix of the album. That's the thing that's been promoted the most during these times since they did Get Back, Let It Be, the White Album, Sgt. Pepper, is about these remixes. Now up front I'll say, I am not a huge fan of the remixes. Now it, partly it could be because I've heard these albums my entire life, since they came out in 1966, 67, 68, 69, and 70. And you get used to uh, this when that happens. You get used to the music, it's in your head, so when you hear something different, it's jarring. Now, sometimes it's kind of fun to hear an alternate version, a different version, and it can be exciting, like, oh, I didn't, I never heard that instrument before or that vocal before. One thing that interests me, and in a way it puzzles me, especially with Revolver and Sgt. Pepper, when you think about it on the surface, all this time we've told, well, Revolver, Sgt. Pepper, it's what George Martin, Jeff Emmerich, the Beatles, that is the version we wanted, the mono version. It's the mono, stupid. It's the mono version. And now we're all concentrating on the stereo. Now, having said that, I understand because in, when they were doing stereo in those days, vocals sometimes were pushed to one side, pan to the left, pan to the right. Eleanor Rigby is a good example. Well, I want to state here for the record, I am a fan of Sgt. Pepper and revolver stereo first. And as much as the mono is, and maybe a little more rockin', especially in Sgt. Pepper, I like the ethereal thing of these psychedelic electronic records in stereo. So I played the stereo remix, and I played, uh, this is a 70s, 1970s version of stereo Revolver uh, UK, obviously. I know they're trying to replicate the original cover and everything, but since it is a remix, they should state somewhere it's a remix. Do an alternative version now. When I show you the box set and the alternate versions, you'll see the alternate cover. Maybe that would have been a good idea for the stereo. It's a remix. Let us know it's a remix. Somewhere here, put it, it's a remix. Eventually, these records are going to get absorbed in people's collection, especially the ones that are not included in a box set, and people aren't going to know. Does it matter? Yeah. I think Giles Martin, with that Peter Jackson software where he could isolate tracks, did a fantastic job on the remix. Do I like it better than the original? No, I don't. I don't. But it's very good. And I, I think the thing that comes out the best are the vocals, because you get that center vocal that people used to bitch about um, in terms of the original, where you'd get Paul's vocal left, vocal harmonies come in, Eleanor Rigby, there's music, and then all of a sudden his vocals come in, I think on the right channels, I recall, and now they're dead centered. The vocals are up. I found in some of the songs, the music, in fact, What's the song here? Uh, here, there, and everywhere. I found the music, it's seemingly, in my ears, in my system, my stereo, the musical uh, instrumentation, the rhythm, the drums are further back and Paul's voice is w more in your face until that little lead counterpoint uh, guitar thing comes in and that's uh, up there a lot. It is a successful remix. I think, the centered vocals, again, is the main thing about this. So I do recommend it, but those of us of a certain age, we're used to hearing this for all these years. So 
initially it's a jarring thing. If I, for the next year, two, three, ten, listen to this remix, I would be totally satisfied with it. Another thing, the idea of centering the vocals and make it, you know, very in your face, coming into your, as if there were a center speaker, to me defeats the purpose of stereo. It might as well be a mono. Go listen to the mono if you want that. Having said that, I think I prefer the stereo remix in a way even to the original mono. The original mono rocks, the original mono is good, but there is something in the new stereo remix that gives you this sort of center imaging that sounds really, really good and really interesting. Of course, this is an initial thing. I've listened to the remix album twice only, and I compared it before and after to an original stereo, this original stereo pressing. So, I mean, I like it. I think it's successful, and that's the stereo remix. Good job, Giles. You know, I can't get through this video without mentioning uh, Jeff Emmerich. Jeff Emmerich was the engineer that came on to work with the Beatles project from Revolver on. He added so much to the sound. This Earlier, remember in this video where I said it seems like their first electric album with the experimentation, with the different sound effects, with the using speakers as a microphone in some cases. Jeff Emmerich was a big, big part of that. And uh, I can't continue without mentioning uh, the late, great Jeff Emmerich, who worked on uh, worked with the Beatles from Revolver on. Now, before I get into the book, which I want to show, and then the book and then the outtakes, it does come with this EP. And to me, this is a really wonderful gem that comes in the box set. And I know CD people, our heads are exploding because apparently I haven't gotten my CD mega deluxe box yet, but it's a short CD. And for whatever friggin' reason, CD people like to say, just because there's 70 minutes you can stick on a CD, you should put fill it up with 70 minutes worth of crap or stick this, but that's not the point. I like that they configured this box set from the vinyl point of view where we are now, because that seems to be an, an emphasis uh, on this. And I know everybody is not in the vinyl, but so suck it up and play your short four song EP on compact disc too. But this is really beautifully done. It's a heavy stock. Unfortunately, um, my record has a slight warp to it, it does not affect the sound, could have been flatter, but that's, I'm picking, but you know, I wish it was flatter. So uh, Universal, Beatles, uh, Estates, if you want to send me a replacement of this, go ahead. I'm not going to like schlep it all back just to get a new 45, but it's of course the British EP style, beautiful package. Now what this is, these are the great singles that came out early that year as well. Rain, a paperback writer, in mono, the uh, remix, and again, I don't believe it says remix. I don't get that. Come on, Beatles. Come on, EMI, EMI, Universal, wh whoever you are now, Estates. I think you should have had some kind of notation that it's a remix. I understand the concept of replicating the original, what you did like in the mono box, but those weren't remixes. That's why that is so wonderful. And in the mono, that's not a remix, but it is all analog. You did fine here, but I think this could have been designated. Uh, one side is mono, one side is stereo. Those two great songs. Uh, Rain, arguably the best drumming of Ringo Starr ever, and of course, Payback Rider. Uh, again, on this one, it was surprising. I actually liked Rain and Payback Rider better in mono. Uh, I like the mono version on this better than the stereo. But again, these are s subjective decisions opinions based on how long we've heard these songs, how many times we've heard them, what we like, what we prefer. Do we like songs going left and right through our noggin or do we like that always that dead center vocal? I think, uh, you know, it depends on the record for me. I like the dead center vocaling, but vocaling, but yokling, but I love it when a psychedelic -y electronic album floats through your head like in Sgt. Pepper and Revolver. So um, good job on this. I'm glad they did it as an EP instead of just tacking it on to some album. This is the way it was meant to be, not tacked on an album like they did. What, Beatles, Hey Jude, Beatles Again, they finally stuck these on an album because of Alan Klein.
in America. The box, the 4LP box, beautifully designed, really well made. One thing, it reminded me of a Hebrew box because here's the cover. Usually the records are on the right side here. It's an opposite, so it almost looks like this is the cover. Just because the opening, it's like reversed. I don't really care, but I just, I did notice that because I was thinking, you know, you look at the cover and then you pull it on the right. You get what I'm saying? So it has the four LPs and the book. So I'll get to this in a minute. I'll tell you what this is if you don't know. I'm sure since you've seen 10,000 other unboxings and displays and uh, mashups of this revolver album, you already know what this is. But I will tell you in a minute. This is the beautiful book. Now, it has a spot varnish cover. There's a little bit of a, a sort of the hairs from Klaus Vorman. You really can't see it with my lighting set up here. Can you see that? There you go. You get a little bit of the Klaus Vorman hair from the cover art and you get your Apple logo on the back. And, and this is great. I am a fan. I've said this many times on my channel. You know it because you've heard me like beat a dead horse. I love the artwork. That's a big part of these boxes for me. But it comes down to it, the bottom line, do we need another remix or another version of a Beatle album? No, we don't. As long as the Beatle records and mono and stereo are in print. And unfortunately, it's the only way you can get this mono LP right now is um, in this box set. Those records should be in print, especially, come on, Apple. Come on, Beatles. Come on, Paul. Come on, Ringo. You're always telling us the mono is the first choice. The mono is the way you intended these records. Then why aren't the mono records in print? They should be. They should stay in print. They should be so everyone can buy them individually. Uh, the book showcases the entire recording process from the two singles, Paperback Rider and Rain. But there's this whole introduction, which... I was pleasantly surprised, and it was written by Questlove. Questlove, the drummer from The Roots, uh, film producer, he did Summer of Soul uh, that came out uh, just during the pandemic, same time the Get Back documentary came out. There he is, if you don't know who he is. An amazing musicologist. What I liked about this, they didn't get the same old tired wanker beetle expert right who, who's been in every other uh book and intro and reissue set they got someone from a different perspective who didn't grow up with the beatles he's what 20 20 to 25 years younger than me i'm 68 so uh, he's younger comes from a different cultural background his father his parents had beetle records and he got into it beginning with Sgt. Pepper and got into it because of soul versions of Aretha Franklin, you know, doing Hey Jude and Eleanor Rigby and Ray Charles and all these other artists covering Beatles. He heard the soulful side of it, but then he got it. It took a while and he got the psychedelic sound. He got the drumming and rain. He got it. I really love the essay that opens up this. And that's something that's not getting a lot of attention, but I think it's important. And I think it really, also, you know, maybe is it is it included to bring it to a younger audience, to introduce this music to a younger audience? Possibly. But it's really nice to get a different perspective of someone who only maybe got into the Beatles over the last 20 years or so. They go through track by track. You see the tape boxes. There's an essay on each track. So it's great to have this wonderful book and I believe this is in both editions. I think it's the same book. This is great they did this. I mean, in a way I wish this was on the remix cover I said earlier. This is the photo montage by Robert Freeman. Robert Freeman was the photographer who took more album covers for the Beatles with the Beatles, Beatles for Sale, Hard Day's Night, Help, Rubber Soul. He photographed all those amazing covers. He put together this montage of photographs that he took and instead they went with the um, Klaus Vorman. I love how they put this test pressing style label this time around. Two LPs, it says not for sale, 
but it's very much for sale, right? Long playing test record. And I'm not going to go th through every track. A couple of these things we've heard, we've heard collectively before on the anthology series, especially the uh, Anna and Your Bird Can Sing version. To me, uh, the biggest revelation was John Lennon's sort of acoustic uh, version of what the song that would become Yellow Submarine about in the town when I was born. It doesn't talk anything about a yellow submarine. And obviously with the help of Paul, that was developed for Ringo. But you have versions of Tomorrow Never Knows, some of which uh, we've heard again on Anthology. But works in progress have got to get you in, into my life before the horns were there, the electric sound of the guitars. Again, we hear the real electricity of this record with the electric instruments for the most part. Uh, Paperback Rider, you hear the backing track without the vocals, and it's it's such a rocker, and that's just a killer kickoff uh, piece of music, and I love that. Another uh, revelation to me was hearing rain at the full normal speed, because if you've heard the uh, record, which I'm sure you have, it's a slow down version. They actually slowed it way down. So this is the first time that I can recall hearing the actual full fast version. They speed it down, then obviously uh, John adds his vocals to it and also adds the backwards guitar at the end. One of my favorite songs by John Lennon around this period is I'm Only Sleeping. And I talked about the various mixes, mono stereo yesterday and today with the backwards guitar playing. And I just love that. But I always thought of that song, and, and this is probably a stretch, but hear me out here. Peggy Lee, Fever. When I wake up in the morning, you got fever. Not that it sounds like that, but it's got that almost missed beat when this vocal comes in on the second verse. When I wake up early in the morning, indulge me there. But some, someone will. Most of you won't, but some will. Of course, I said already Yellow Submarine, she said, she said. But again, Outtake versions, alternate versions. I mean, I've heard people say, I listened to these once and that's it. That's all I need to hear it. I get that. I get that. You can get the uh, CD box set that'll have these two. But um, this is what I love the most about these sorts of sets. So, in the end, Revolver is my favorite Beatles album. I think it, it covers all the bases. There's so many different genres in, in, in a way in there. Got to get in my life. A great it's kind of soul... Uh, Motown type of song. You got the, you know, hipster, I'm only sleeping a little bit. You got the, you know, Yellow Submarine, a fun sing song. You got the Indian motif with George Harrison pieces. And you got Taxman, the first time the Beatles really did a protest song. And George Harrison uh, leads off the album and Paul McCartney's amazing guitar solo in that. So uh, Revolver, the remix, 4LP set. Let me know your thoughts. Everyone's got a different take. Now I may go jump in and watch two or 3,000 of those other unboxing. No, I'm not going to do the unboxing, but the uh, reviews. And I'm really curious on uh, other people's take on this set. So I appreciate you watching. I see the sun is getting down. We're getting into the evening. And Mazzy loves you. Thanks for watching, everyone.